Having practiced for 30 plus years uh, and having seen and experienced the benefits of mediation, uh, I thought it seemed to be just a logical move to kind of transition my practice into becoming a neutral. And so that's, that's the main reason I became a neutral. Isn't it fun though? It I is. just absolutely love it. And I, I think as much fun as I had practicing, it's almost as if it's compounded being a neutral because you get to play a role in a case, but then if everything goes right at the end of the day, you have that opportunity to say, hey, I've come in, I've helped, and it's been a one day thing instead of a two or three year thing. Great. So yeah. you have that sense of completion, even though, I mean, your participation is, is rather yeah. minimal in terms of the entire length of the case. When it creates a totally different challenge because you come in and you learn about the case that day, you dive into the facts that day, you learn about the people that day, and hopefully by the end of the day, you've resolved a case for them that they've been living with for two or three years. Absolutely. And I love the challenge of it. Every case is different. Every personality involved is different. The lawyers and their clients have different personalities, different challenges and obstacles to overcome in each mediation. And you offer a benefit that a lot of folks don't necessarily understand they have before they come to mediation, which is you get to play the role of somebody that's solving their problem instead of the person that's carrying the sword to fight their fight. Uh, you come in and you have the opportunity to say, today we can fix this. Let's get it over with today and let's get you back to what you need to be doing. I think one of the great things about being a neutral is bringing creative solutions to the table. And I know Jennifer, you and Matt both have talked about how you've been able to craft solutions that the parties didn't even anticipate at the time. And that's just not something you're gonna get inside of a courtroom. You're gonna get 12 people deciding your case for you. When you get to a mediation, you have that opportunity to really set the terms for yourself. When your point about 12 people deciding for you, it makes no sense when you think about it. It might be the best system we have available in the court process, but in the ADR process, the people who know most about the case, the people who have an interest in the case, an investment in the outcome of the case, make the decision. In, in court, you usually have outcome A or outcome B. Uh, and sometimes the solution is C or D. And you can't get there in court, even if, it, even if you went to court and put up your best case and the jury bought everything you said and went with it, you may not end up with the result that you could have achieved through ADR particularly in the premises liability field, which is I do a lot of, and it's usually an all or nothing outcome mm -hmm. if it goes to court. And the benefit of me uh, mediation is that the parties do get to, to make the decision and, and decide for themselves how they wanna, like you say, get a, a, either a C or a D alternative as opposed to the A or B. And sometimes the parties are at a point when they come to mediation that they are not communicating with each other and they don't even know that there is an option C or D available. I had a business litigation case that started out like a negotiation over a contract termination. And what it turned into was a negotiation for a future business relationship and ended up being a negotiation to provide future work at a discounted rate for a long term. And both sides ended up walking away very pleased. And that's what I love about mediation is litigators often think it's, it has to be a lose-lose. And I don't blame them for that. I thought that when I was a young lawyer too, but I've had 20 years of experience. And now that I'm sitting in the chair as a neutral, I can see that there's a lot of other opportunities to make this a win-win for people. Particularly in a business setting where you know, business A and business B may be in a dispute over something at this moment in time, but it really would be to both of their advantages to work it out because they may have an interest in working together in the future. And you can achieve that much more easily through the mediation process than you can in a courtroom because when it goes to the courtroom, usually everybody's so ingrained in their position that the relationships are irreparably harmed at the end of the case. And that's especially true in construction. And many of the construction cases I have Time is money, and it's very important for them to resolve their disputes and get on, get on to the next project, go work for the next owner, and they don't really have time to get bogged down in a lot of time and expense in litigation. In that situation, they're going to be working with those same companies and businessmen and people in the future on future projects, so it's good to have it resolved amicably as opposed to adversarially. And confidentially. 
I mean, we don't talk about that uh, nearly enough in this process, but especially in the business context or in the construction context, you don't want to go to trial and have a big old verdict against you splashed in the daily report or whatever other media um, entity that's going to put it out there. If you can resolve your dispute quietly and still move forward in relationships, in business relationships, you know, down the road, that works for everyone. The advantage of ADR, I think, is obvious. You have two parties that have a dispute, and they can take their case and they can put it in the hands of a jury, or they can come to a place where they can be heard and where they can make the decision, where they can decide when, where, and how much, and they can do that in an environment that's welcoming as opposed to intimidating like a courtroom. And they, they have control. That's really what it amounts to. When, you, when you're in litigation, you, you as a litigant or you as a representative do not really have control of the process. Uh, Pre-trial, the judge has complete control of your process. Uh, during trial, the judge and jury have control of your process. And you have input, but you never have control. ADR gives you that control. There's such uncertainty, too, involved with a jury trial. Uh, again, there's no telling what a jury's going to do with a given set of facts. And ADR provides certainty. Uh, closure, the ability to, to resolve the case, and there's a definite value to be put on finality. And it provides a more cost-effective solution to litigation. Litigation can be expensive. It can be time-consuming. And not just a financial cost on outside counsel, but also on the business cost to a business who's losing money because their efforts, their employees, are focused on sitting through depositions, responding to interrogatories, responding to document requests, gathering emails and electronic discovery. And all of that is a cost to the business and an expense. And businesses aren't in the, litigation's not a moneymaker. Co corporations are not in the business of litigation. So any opportunity to save time and money, it, it's very worthwhile. And anytime you get a jury verdict, it's out there for all the world to see. And ADR gives you the opportunity to frame the terms of your settlement and make it con confidential. And that's important for a lot of litigants. I think there are some people that think that you need to be a retired judge or someone with 40 years of experience to be a mediator, but the reality is that doesn't reflect the Georgia bar and it doesn't reflect the body of litigants that are out there uh, suing or defending suits. Uh, we have people of all different ages, races, genders as litigants, as lawyers, and we need that as mediators as well. And that includes individuals like ourselves who may not have 40 years of experience, but we have 20 and we're good at our jobs and we know what we're doing. And I think that's important for the Georgia Bar to understand. Absolutely, Rusty. I think that we have this opportunity to kind of shatter some of those stereotypes about what a mediator is. And um, given that, um, you know, the, the, the practice itself has been somewhat slow to diversify. So I'm not necessarily surprised that ADR is not a super diverse space. But what I love about Miles is the fact that we're embracing that. We're, we're taking that challenge head on and we're doing something about it because we have made diversity one of the cornerstones of, of our practice. And I think it's important in how we approach ADR and it's important to the people who walk through our doors. Diversity is more than what people typically associate with the word diversity. Uh, you know, the typical things being age, race, um, gender, those, those things are about diversity and we have all of those things here at Miles. Uh, but diversity also includes experience, uh, and, and not just in the courtroom experience, but in the area of law experience. And the area of law experience is important, the background of what you did as a lawyer's experience, but it's also life experience. You know, when you go into these mediations, sometimes what ends up working with people is more about something that you can relate to them with than your practice of law experience. Absolutely. And I know that you were a business owner, isn't that right, before, yeah. you, before you were a practicing attorney, and I'm sure that, that that comes to bear in your mediations because people can relate to you on that level. I mean, 
sometimes people only get lawyers when they're in trouble. <laughs> but certainly, um, other business owners can relate to people who have been there. That's They've right. done that. And that level of diversity that we bring as a group is vital. Yeah, and it may not just be business experience. It could be something that you know you experienced when you were in high school. Just just some random experience that you had in life, and something that you, or somewhere that you were from. I mean, I know that you and I are both in the Northeast, and you know we have something like that in common. You walk into a mediation, and somebody's from Cleveland. You know, immediate, have a lot to talk immediately about. they're going to like Bianca. <laughs> uh, you know, it's it's just being a person that can relate to other people. There's a, there's an importance in that that is a part of the diversity aspect as well. Mm -hmm. It's true that you never know what personal experience you have that you might be able to touch on during a mediation with a particular claimant or a particular claims adjuster or whoever it might be uh, to help get a case resolved when otherwise, if you didn't have that shared experience, you not, might not be able to talk to them on the same level that you otherwise could. Well, some of that goes to Jennifer's point of preparation, knowing who your litigants are, knowing maybe not so much the, the litigants, but at least the lawyers and where they went to school, where they grew up, those types of things. So I think that certainly speaks to that as well. And, you know, people have implicit bias, and sometimes everybody has implicit bias, right? And so they may not realize it. And I, and I will say, when I was in private practice, I would select mediators based on somebody that ha was much, much older than I was, that had gray hair, I've been practicing as long as I've been alive because he must know about this subject. And so if, you know, I don't blame people who might have that misconception um, about mediators, but when I would hire somebody like that and they weren't focused on the issue or they wanted to leave at five o'clock or, you know, they didn't have the drive, the passion to keep going um, to, to get a solution they weren't energetic about it. They wanted to tell lots of war stories, which I felt was a complete waste of my client's time and, and, money. and money. And those things, they were frustrating to me. And when I used a younger mediator who was a female, and she did a great job, and I said, you know what, I'm going back to her. And I kept going to her and going to her and having great results. And so I would have never known unless I'd tried that mediator and gave her a shot. And I do feel like in a lot of the construction cases I have, um, men have a misconception that I don't know what I'm talking about. They might think that I'm a lot younger than I actually am. But when, I, when it comes down to brass tacks and I am, know the specs and know the construction delays and know their liquidated damages claim and understand the issues, and they say, oh, she does know what she's doing. And when I get that case resolved after 20 hours of mediation and they give me a standing ovation and hire me again, it's like, yes, I got that opportunity to, to get in there and earn their respect. And so I would like for other lawyers and corporations to be cognizant of that and give other mediators an opportunity. Just give them a shot and you might find they never go back to that mediator they, they used to use. I feel like the associate with, association with Miles is everything. Uh, Miles is the biggest and best mediation and arbitration firm in the Southeast. Um, it's an unbelievable place to work. We have an unbelievable roster of neutrals and I'm just proud to be associated with it. And I like the diversity of our panel. I mean, I think that we bring a younger generation of lawyers who can actually specialize in conflict resolution and make a living at conflict resolution. We're not doing this for retirement, for a retirement activity, um, because we're retired and have nothing better to do with our time. We're doing this because we're great at it, because we're passionate about it, and because people need us to solve their problems. And that's that's what I love, just the enthusiasm. And I, I look at the younger generation and the panel at Miles and think, this is the future of resolution right here. And the future of resolution is, is pretty fun, honestly. I mean, I just, I love walking in the doors every day because it's just such a great place to work. It really is. I mean, and, and the folks that I'm sitting with make it a great place to work. It's, it's engaging, it's fun, it's challenging. Uh, but more than anything, if you could find 
a more talented, intelligent, diverse group of ADR professionals anywhere else, I would be there. But I know I've got it here. And that's why I love being at Miles. And there's something to add to that that goes beyond just the ADR panel itself. But if you if you consider Miles as a full as a full company, and you and you look at the entirety of the people that are here, our staff goes well beyond what you will find anywhere else as far as not only hospitality and quality, but just genuinely caring about about the company and about the process and about the neutrals. They want to promote us. They want to be a part of our, our careers and. That's something I don't think you, you're going to find anywhere else. And I think you have to give John credit for Absolutely. driving it in that direction. You know, he's got the vision to, to see that this is the future of it and put it together and put it into, into practice. And I think one of the things that sets Miles apart from any other place is the collaborative nature. Things like sitting around and talking about our practice like this, the continued training, all of those things go into what makes Miles the place to be. And, it, what, and it's what makes our neutrals the best because the training, the development, it doesn't stop the minute that you sign on and get on the website. That's just, that's just step one, because we are constantly talking to each other, trying to get better, trying to understand how to hone our craft and practice ADR better every single day. Unlike some of the other firms, it's just a collection of independent mm -hmm. mediators who do their own thing and, and then head home. Right. And I think the collaborative and, nature is really what sets this place apart. And to that also, you know, those other firms where you have that nature, you have quote, infighting, internal fighting amongst the, the panel. No one wants to cooperate with one another because they're afraid that if they're working it's together or something, business. their business right. is going to go with the other person. And that's definitely not something that I've experienced here at Miles. Everybody open handedly walks in and tries to help each other out. Mm -hmm. But I think the, the training is so valuable. Um, even to our clients because really the neutrals are sharing ideas, strategies, what's worked, what hasn't worked, and just staying on the top of our game and really staying cutting edge so that we can offer our clients the best services. It makes us all better. It just It makes us all better. Um, and that's what it's all about is being able to get better at what we do to serve our clients in the best ma manner possible. And there's no other format available around here or anywhere else that I'm aware of that provides that same, that same background for us to be able to latch on to and go with. One misconception I think that's out there for litigators is that they feel like they need to complete the discovery phase before they get the case to mediation. Some of them come to mediation when they're two weeks out from a specially set trial or um, after they've already teed the case up for summary judgment. And they're, they're so far down the case and have so much invested. And I, I, I think they haven't really thought about the fact that they could have mediated this case a year earlier and gotten a settlement, and in many cases, a settlement that would have been a better outcome financially for their client had they gotten the case into the mediation sooner. Um, and, they, and they're not really thinking about that or taking advantage of those opportunities. I think they, so some lawyers feel like if they don't do the discovery and if they don't turn over every stone before they go to mediation, that they're not doing a, a service to their client because they don't have the entire case put into sort of a framework. And that, that I, I can understand that. I've had that pressure on me at times as a litigator as well. But I also look at it from this point of perspective. The, the clients really pretty much know the universe of facts that are going to come out in this case. They know what's going to come out in discovery. Uh, they don't need the document production all the time in order for that fact to be in their head. They lived it. Uh, so if they come into the mediation room early on, even pre-litigation, they have an opportunity to, to take advantage of that process and avoid spending all that time and money dealing with digging out documents and putting litigation holds on all of their uh, electronic material, and, and they don't have to expend that time and money and effort if they come in and they can figure out a way to resolve it quickly. And one thing that is not going down is the cost of litigating a case. And people, by the time, if, they, if, if they're two weeks away on a specially set calendar and they've gotten their experts and they've spent tens of thousands of dollars, sometimes even more, on a case, it makes it hard for everyone when, you, when you're that close and you're that charged, uh, it, it makes it difficult 
to have, a, have, have an environment that's right for settlement. So the earlier, the better. Um, it's, you know, it, it allows people to be in the right mindset for settlement, but it also saves a ton of money. Think about it from the personal level too. For a client who may not be in litigation very often, that's a totally different world that they don't really want to be a part of, but they're thrust into being a part of. If they can mediate it on the early end before they have to get stressed about giving a deposition, you know, some people don't like that. Oh, absolutely. Before they have to get worried about turning over all their medical history in a personal injury case or something to that effect, and they can resolve it before going through those emotional steps, it's so much better for them. I had a case recently with a, a very experienced lawyer on, on one end, and a very and a, his opposing counsel was a, a young, less experienced lawyer. And um, we settled the case in mediation, and the defense attorney told me, um, Jennifer, you have articulated a case in here when you come in for the plaintiff that had that young lawyer articulated it in this way and laid out these risks that we were facing, that we didn't realize these facts were happening. We didn't have these records before today. We didn't have this information. If, if this had been come to us a year ago, we would have paid twice the value that we're paying, that they're willing to take today. Just because, um, you know, it hasn't been articulated in a certain way or these risks explored. And so I think that's, that's important for lawyers to think about when they're really positioning the timing for mediation. I, Go ahead. I, well, I tell people all the time in mediations, we usually resolve our cases. And Miles, as, a, as an organization, we resolve about 85% of our cases. So. Um, we're, we've got great statistics, but there is that 15% that, that doesn't settle. But I always tell people, even if you don't settle your case today, you should leave with more information. You should understand more of what's going on in that other room. And I consider it part of my duty to probe, to ask the questions from a different perspective that, that people may not be thinking of. So you can give the parties the opportunity to see the case from a different perspective. And, and that was the point that I was going to make as well, Bianca, that you learn something even when you don't settle the case, if you're one of the litigants, if you're one of the attorneys representing the litigants. And even if it doesn't settle at the mediation today, it may have opened a door that ends up resolving the case down the road that wasn't going to be opened unless they went through that process. I had a mediation where the defense identified a witness that was extremely harmful for the plaintiff's case. And it was never uncovered at that point in discovery. And it was really a game changer uh, for the case. But nobody had even mentioned this, this witness until I walked into the plaintiff's room and said, who is Joe Schmo? And that changed the dynamic of the mediation and got it resolved. But it was witnesses that hadn't even come up yet in, in the case. I had a very similar situation. Uh, and the mediation actually um, ended with an impasse. But then three weeks later, after getting a little bit more information that they had taken with them and sort of stewing over that information a little bit, they realized how it changed their case and realized that settlement was the best option. So sometimes people need to get that information presented at a mediation and then sort of live with it a little bit and, and think about how, how it changes the entire framework. And, and not very often, even those folks who walk out and say, we're not settling our case today, do it a week or two weeks after. I think if a case does impasse at, at mediation, I, I do think it's important to stay in touch with mm -hmm. both sides, both lawyers, uh, just to see if there's anything further that, that needs to be handled or information exchanged and if there is certainly make that make the offer to do so but i think it is important to, to follow up periodically and even if they say no nothing at the time but continue to follow up with them and to see if you know a week two weeks a month from now there's anything further that can be handled or accomplished to, to see if we can't get the case uh, resolved so i think it's important follow-up i think is important mm -hmm. 
And I, I do think that once people leave the mediation and they go home and they think about, they just process all of the information that they've learned um, and things that they hadn't thought about, perspectives that they didn't have before on their case or how they looked at certain facts or witnesses or what a jury might think or what a judge might do on that summary judgment motion. And people may rethink where they want to go with resolving the case. And there's a, it, for, for folks, especially in the personal injury context, who come into a mediation, that experience can be an intimidating one. Um, you know, we've talked about other aspects of the case. You know, if you go to trial, it's certainly intimidating to tell your story in front of 12 folks or if you're getting deposed. But even, even this process can be a little unnerving. So sometimes it just takes a little bit more reflection and an opportunity to not be sort of actively in it to let it all sink in. But it's just effective no matter, no matter how you cut it. It really does work. And sometimes mediation is the first time since the genesis of the dispute that the other side really hears the other side's position. I mean, they may read it, they may see a bunch of briefs, they may see, you know, all of the law and all of the discovery and summary judgment motions in many cases, but they don't hear it. They don't really feel it. They don't understand it as well because they're really looking at it from their perspective. And it's really hard when you're a litigant and sometimes when you're representing a litigant to see the other side of the coin. You're, you're, you're buried in on this one fact and this one piece of law and you, you're feeling confident on that. But you know, your case is not normally that one fact and that one piece of law. It's a greater universe of facts and a greater universe of law. And then you may find something very compelling that a jury may not care at all about. Uh, so <laughs> so you, you really, for the first time in mediation, are hearing from the other side what they have to say from them themselves or from them, their counsel sitting across the table from them. And then you have the benefit of a third party who has heard both sides of it kind of interjecting into that conversation things that they, they really didn't think of prior to walking in the door. One of the skills I think that makes an effective neutral is an ability to listen. I think you're there to hear what their problems are and to try to hear what they're saying in between the words to try to develop or figure out what their motives are and motivations are to, to, to craft a, a response or something that they can both you know, live with in terms of a resolution. Yeah, empathy is also important. You know, a lot of the folks that come in for mediation are in a, in a dispute, which is to us something that we see on an everyday basis, but to them, this is you know, not what they normally go through in their lives. And to be able to empathize with them and understand their, their perspective from where they're coming from and hearing their story is, is important as listening, because then once you do that, you've built a level of trust with them. And once you've established a level of trust, the opportunities for settlement um, are boundless, whereas if they don't think that you're there helping them find the resolution, it could be a pretty quick process. I think you make a great point, Doug, about listening to what's going on between the lines. And sometimes what's, what's not being said is almost as important as what is, what is being said. Uh, you know, I think, gosh, probably every, you know, out of every four mediations, every two or three, I'm, I'm asking um, plaintiffs in the personal injury context, at least, what is, wh what's going on here? You know, what, what, what's, that, what's that reaction that I'm getting from you? Because it isn't really in relation to what the information I've brought back to you. And often there's a backstory. There's more to it. There's, there's a lot more that is going on under the surface than any numbers that we might be exchanging or any information about that particular case. Sometimes it's, I haven't felt respected. I haven't felt heard. And mediation in particular, gives people that opportunity much better than going to trial. Because as we all know, having tried cases, there's so much you can't say. And, and I think one of the surprising things for litigants when they get to this stage, when they get to us and in, in, in the ADR, is sort of discovering everything that I think is important is not what's gonna be shared with jurors. Yeah, and you touched on something that made me think, mediation can be that litigant's day in court to the extent they need to be heard, to the extent they need to tell their story, and frankly for the lawyers too, to the extent they want that opportunity to go in and advocate for their clients, that can all happen within the confines of the mediation just as much as it can in the courtroom.
And I think one thing that's important to having an effective mediator is to have somebody that's prepared. I always reach out to the lawyers in the case before the mediation starts to find out not just what the case is about, but what do I need to know going in? What's the relationship with your client? What's your relationship with the opposing counsel? What's the relationship between the two litigants? And really what's what's driving people? What's upsetting them? What, what's gotten them to where we are today? Because knowing that coming in and obviously getting information, reading all the records, I had one case where they gave me 1,200 pages before the mediation started to read so that I could come in and just get started and not spend the better part of the morning learning about the case because it's just not efficient and it's not the best use of the mediator's time to come in blindly and be getting all of that information. Um, it, it's helpful for me to get it on the front end, to be thinking about it, strategies, whether people should be doing openings together, um, how they might approach that, because all of that kind of sets the tone for how the mediation is going to go and really can set it up for the best possible outcome. And that's working with counsel that's experienced in dealing with mediation. Unfortunately, I think the misconception with counsel that's not taking efficient and effective use of mediation is that mediators are nothing more than a courier that's going to go back and forth from one room to another room, exchanging the information that the other side provided to them, feeling like, hey, I went to law school, I can negotiate just as well as you. Why do I need a mediator? What, what skill do you bring to this conversation? And they don't understand that there's actually a skill set associated with being a mediator and that you have to be involved in the process, prepared for the process, and be able to come up with and craft solutions that may not be what they can get through the court system. And just like what people can have a law degree, that doesn't necessarily make them a good lawyer. And people can be a mediator but not necessarily have the right skill set to communicate with people, to break down barriers, to move the process forward. And to your point, Jennifer, about um, just being prepared for a mediation, if more attorneys thought about that as being that zealous representation of their client and taking, taking the process as an opportunity to show their clients that hey, I'm here for you, I'm advocating for you in this context, and this is a real opportunity for us to seek a solution today. Um, I think that it only strengthens the process overall. My advice for people who are in a conflict or a dispute would be to take control of it. We've talked about how the jury process can take the control away from people. You're really putting your decision in the hands of people you don't know and who don't know you and who don't know what you've been through. Coming to the ADR process allows you to take control of that dispute. Through your attorney, through the abilities of the neutral you select, you can resolve your dispute that day and put it in the rear view mirror and move on to things that are more important. My advice for people who are dealing with conflict resolution would be to listen, and it's hard. I mean, it's hard when you think that you've been wrong or you're defending yourself against a situation where you feel someone doesn't have the right information. But what really breaks down the barriers in the ADR process is the ability to listen to one another. And that's what a skilled neutral brings to the table, is the ability to break down those barriers so people can actually listen and resolve their disputes. Right. And on that front, I agree, Bianca, and I think what's important is that people feel that they've been hurt. And that's why it's so important to encourage all of the parties to listen to one another so that the person who's talking really feels, I've been hurt, I've been understood. It doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna agree with that person, but if they feel like they've said what they have to say, they've made their pace, it's the first step in them being able to psychologically move forward with resolving their conflict. Yeah, I think there's uh, mediation has become a lot more popular in the last, last 15 or 20 years. So when I first started practicing, it wasn't, yeah, it wasn't a thing. Um, but in the 90s, it started becoming more popular. And now it's, I don't see there, there being any 
end to it anytime soon. I think this is the wave of the future. I think more and more cases are going to be coming to mediation, coming to arbitration, some form of alternative dispute resolution, just because of the cost savings, the time savings, the, the, the stress levels are a lot lower. So I don't see, think there's going to be any, any slowdown anytime soon. And there's a huge uh, efficacy factor as well. I mean, you have these cases are coming in and the majority of them are settling. And, you know, I wouldn't wait for a judge to order me to go to mediation, to go to mediation, but the judges are also seeing that. They understand that they can get cases off of their dockets by ordering parties to mediate cases. And notice you're seeing more and more pre-litigation mediations coming mm -hmm. in, where the parties are getting together and agreeing to mediate before it goes into litigation. So I think that's gonna continue to increase as well. I think also that a lot of corporations are going to see value in attempting to resolve uh, cases before they spend significant funds on outside counsel and litigation, and also for confidentiality reasons, like you mentioned. And it provides them an opportunity also to maintain business or relationships with the company that they may be in dispute with or the person that they may be in dispute with. A lot easier to, to fix the problem before it gets to litigation and have that relationship continue than if they, the they're, burning, they're burning them a little bit every day, right? And if they can stop that before it gets out of hand, that certainly helps them in their business. Yeah, I think more people are embracing the process. Early on in my career as a lawyer, I feel like it was a box you checked for certain judges that wanted you to go. And now I feel like people are referring more and more cases to dispute resolution to a point where I think the A and ADR is gonna get dropped at some point. I think it's just going to be dispute resolution because this is where disputes are going to be resolved. And I think that litigators see that it adds value. If you can get a case resolved for your client at a savings to them that they would have otherwise spent to get that result through trial or spare the, the risk of a potentially catastrophic outcome at trial, um, there's, there's definitely value in that for litigators because you have a happy client, they're gonna come back to you again and again and again with their future litigation. It's all about, I mean, we've been, this theme of relationships has been coming up a lot in our conversation. If an attorney can keep a good relationship with a client moving forward because they've gotten a good resolution, and if companies can keep good relationships with each other because they don't burn every single slat of the bridge or whatever uh, the case may be. Uh, it, it helps preserve those relationships, those important ones, it helps strengthen it. So to me, it's a no-brainer that people are embracing it more and more.